just a little bit bored of building KX 500s and CR 500s. There's only so much you can do to make them different, and they're the same thing. We did Hot Wheels ones. We've done them. We've done them all. So, uh, Brownie contacted me and he said, he's now riding for Yamaha, can I ride a 490? I'm like, no, because as a business, I've got to be able to sell the bikes. And the YZ 490 is a pile. Doesn't start, doesn't stop, too tall, it's an awful thing. And it ain't worth no money when it's finished. So, I worked for Yamaha in 93 in America, so I know the bike's good. Donnie rode him in 93, 94, then things look trick. So I said, if I could build you a 250 with good brakes, good suspension, and a strong motor, then you're only dealing with a 90s geometry in the frame. Is that, yeah, yeah, no problem. So then we were going to build a Bradshaw replica, but we thought we'd go Chesterfield. So we built one, started building one for Brownie, started sourcing the parts. Then I thought, we better not go to Farley with no spares. We'll build a second one, because nobody down here has got any bits for Yamaha. So we started building a second one. And Dave King rings me, oh, we've got Tedesco. So I've been there and bought another bike. Third one, stock, stock wheels, stock suspension, but at least we got a backup if it goes wrong. So we built the Chesterfield bikes. We got a bit carried away, really, if the truth be known. They're worth a lot more than we can sell them for, but we do this for promotion for the business. So fingers crossed they'll be all right. They sound lovely. They've got expensive fuel in them. They've got Olin's forks and sharks. They've got mag cases. They've got billet hubs. They've got... 280 mil front disc, oversized rear discs. We got the, the alley tack, the triple clamps we've made, linkages we've made. There's nothing out there for them. Luckily, I do own Bob Moore's 94 125. So I took the linkage and copied it, triple clamps, copied the offset. Got, so it's going to be all right. We've got two race bikes, which are the full on Olin's fork shocks, billet wheels, all that stuff. And then I thought we need some spares. So we bought a 250 for spares and Tony is my workshop manager he built a 125 at the same time for himself because everything was off for powder coat anodized and Cerakote it, his stuff went with ours bare frame back, vapor blast I mean back to bare metal just everything is new really and as much as they look new yeah I mean you're probably six hours into cleaning up the swing arm each one because you've got taken every mark every nick every you know you don't polish them to look like chrome because that looks like a Harley but you clean them up and it's a good day, it's a day's work to do a swing up. You know, and the linkages are new, triple clamps are new, forks are replated. It's a lot of work. Yeah, the bike's awesome, especially that YZ250 I'm riding, that Doc Wobbs built. It feels really good. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a tall order for us to come over here and jump on the bikes that we never rode and go race, but that thing, you set it up nice, I feel comfortable, and hopefully we can make it happen and win this thing. And just because you can make different line choices out there on this thing. 500, you just got to go where it wants you, so... <laughs> yeah, for sure the 500's got more power, but I have fun on this bike. And then we got the Dyker. The Dyker said he would only come if we built him a... CR500, same with Mike Brown Road last year. So I had a 94 CR500, started building it, got the suspension organised, got a few bits and pieces. Then I get a phone call saying, mm, is there any way you could do an Eric Gabor's tribute bike? I'll get the gear made and the helmet painted to be all Eric. I'm like, well, as it happens, I do own a 1990 CR500 that's in bits. So yeah, rather than building one and having half a bike because you've robbed all the bits off it, I thought we'd build two. So we built one, same as Mike Brown Road Honda Troy bike, and we built the, the Eric Gabor's one. So we sourced the HRC swing arm, the rear axle chain guide, HRC brake discs, big 280 front, and then the alley tank and the cone GSV pipe with the dog leg silencer. And we've got some pro circuit kit forks from 94 with the biggest springs they sell. We're okay. The triple clamps we made, bar mounts we made. It's they're a lot of money, but. Yeah, we've spent some serious bank coming down here. Uh, we rode them up and down here. Just to, we rode them at home just to get the jetting. This is where the Amer this is where the Americans are a disadvantage because they don't get to see the bike till today. Whereas everybody else is testing and shakedowns. We're thinking, I hope the bike don't break because they do break. 
These are 25 year old dirt bikes. They weren't reliable 25 years ago and they're certainly not reliable now. The factory stuff is great because it's factory but it just doesn't fit. The geometry is different, the swing arm on the 500, we had to use a different frame for the linkage geometry. And then the subframe, we had to cut all the lugs off the silencer to make the silencer fit. Nothing fits. It's cool, but it works because you have to work on it to make it fit. Nothing fits. The difference between making a, an old vintage bike that looks pretty is easy. But anybody who builds one, hand on heart, they wouldn't want to ride it. But when you build one that somebody can actually ride, I mean, Mike, Mike never stopped riding. Mike's fast. Ivan's day job is testing post circuit. That's what he does for a living. He's no muck. He was four time Motocross the Nations team member, I think. I mean, he's no idiot. And Ken, he was riding Grand Prix last year. These kids can ride these bikes, and we've got to try to make an inherently unreliable bike get through the weekend. Fingers crossed.